Okay, welcome back to another Flask tutorial video. Uh, in this series, we've been trying to recreate the same type of web app in three different frameworks. We start off in Angular, we then move to ASP.NET Core MVC, and then finally we're going over some Flask basics, I guess you can call it, uh, before we go ahead and just create the same web app in Flask. And today we're gonna talk about template inheritance and before we get started, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. That way you don't miss any videos in the future that you might find useful. And also, if you're interested in extra content, uh, I'll have my Patreon link down below. So if we go back to where we ended the last video, let's go ahead and clean up our folder here with our Flask project. I'm going to get rid of our bootstrap zip and the unzipped bootstrap folder because we just extracted what we need from it with the CSS file. And if we remember from last time, we added a nav bar to the top of our index.html page. And so the question is, what if we want to use the same nav bar, but have different content down here, depending on where the user goes to or where the user routes to? Well, we could just have the same markup in each individual HTML page, or we could use what's called template inheritance. And what you can think of template inheritance as is we have a puzzle and you can put a different piece in a spot depending on what you want to be displayed. However, it's not just one piece that fits in the hole, it's different pieces. So maybe that's not the best analogy. But let's go back and let's just keep the nav bar for now. And I'm going to get rid of the button and the table. And let's just say this right here is our main parent template. And so what Flask lets you do is define block tags. And they look like this. We have open and close curly braces and then two percent signs. And inside of this, we say this is a block and give it some kind of name. And it's arbitrary, but I'm just going to name it content. And you can think of this as the opening of the block. And then we also need to close it. So I'm going to, in the same kind of tag, put end block. And what this does is it gives us an area to put some kind of HTML right where this block lives. But what's kind of cool is this is optional. So if we had something in here, like an H2, hello from the main page, if we don't end up passing anything into this block, which we'll do here in a second, uh, it'll go ahead and render what's in here already. So this is our index HTML. Let's create a new HTML page in our templates directory. And let's call this about.html. And let's make this our about page. And what we want to do in our about.html is say, hey, we want to use index.html as our parent. So at the very top in curly braces and percent signs, we're going to say we're going to extend our index.html, meaning this index.html is our parent template. And now we can go ahead and define what goes into this block that we named content. So just like I wrote it here, I'm going to copy the open and close tag of the block for content. And instead of this H2 saying hello from the main page, how about hello from the about page? And now the only thing we need to do is have a way to get to this about.html page. So if we go back to our main pie and we add a new route, app route, this one's going to be slash about. Let's return render template about.html. And if we spin this back up, and if I refresh this, we get hello from the main page because this is just the slash route. And by default, it's going to show us what we put in the content block here on index.html. But notice if I go to slash about, how it changes from main to about page because that's what we wrote in the about.html. It took what was in this block and it pretty much copied it and pasted it right here. And of course you can have multiple blocks. So if we wanted another block down below, let's call this block test. And in our about.html, this is from the test block. And I'll spin this back up again. And we refresh this slash about, we now see both of those H2s because now we have multiple blocks that we're using. So hopefully you can see how important and how powerful this can be if you want to reuse certain parts of HTML and just dynamically render the rest. 
So that's all we're going to do in this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in a future video.